Hello and welcome to your library instruction session for kinesiology. My name is Elizabeth Cook and I am one of the librarians here at Citrus College and I am here to walk you through your library orientation. You should have a worksheet. Sorry, I'm trying to, you know, I'm used to having a double screen. One screen, not real helpful for me. Okay, here we go. You should have a worksheet that looks like this and you're gonna have to fill it out. So if you follow along with me, you won't have any trouble filling this worksheet out. We're gonna go through it together. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, the first thing I wanna direct your attention to is our library website here. You can get to it through multiple options, either from the Citrus College website or from the Citrus College portal, which you may be more familiar with now since all of our classes are going remote or are remote at this point. Um, even though we are in a strange new world, we want you to know that librarians and library staff are here with you uh, to get you through this. We have a lot of information on our website, but what I want to point out to you is right here, learn more about our remote services and resources. So if I click on that, that is a guide that we have created uh, to kind of walk you through this time. There's some helpful links over here and some resources. Here are some library related links in case you need those. Uh, we usually have our reserved textbooks available. You may know that on the first floor of the library, you can check out reserved textbooks for two hours with a Citrus ID. Obviously the library is closed and you shouldn't come to campus, stay home, stay safe. A lot of publishers are uh, putting their textbooks temporarily online during this time, which is great and really, really helpful. So we have created a list of resources to help you look for your textbook. Here is a list of textbooks that we have found for you, uh, Citrus textbooks that we've discovered and the National um, Emergency Library is available to you too. So library databases are still gonna be available 24 seven. We're gonna go through that together to sort out your worksheets. And you can connect with the librarian during business hours. Our scheduled library hours during this time are Monday and Tuesday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., Wednesday and Thursday from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., and on Friday from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. If you want to talk to a librarian during that time, please feel free to email us, text us. You can open up a live chat with us. If you prefer social media, we're on Facebook and Instagram. And I have gotten a lot of private messages on Instagram about library-related things. We're happy to answer you there, too, if that's how you feel the most comfortable. Uh, if you do happen to have library materials out right now, please know that we don't charge overdue fines. If you get notices in your email, don't worry about it. Do not come to campus to drop off library books. Uh, we also have some stuff on this page about Citrus virtual resources, including tutoring, writing center, speech tutoring, and the STEM center has gone digital as well. So a lot of resources here to help you out through this trying time. So just keep this guide in the back of your mind. If you ever need help, there's information here. But let's go ahead and get started with your worksheet. So the first thing you're going to want to do is look up print books. Now, of course, you can't access print books at the moment because we are not in the library, but I can still show you how to find them. So what we're gonna do is go to the catalog here and type in our topic. I'm gonna to use stress as my topic. And when I click enter, it brings me up our library catalog. Now we switched uh, library catalog systems over this past winter. So if you've had library orientation before, you may notice that this looks a little bit different. Um, also what it gives me is all of my results, right? I can see that I have way more results than I could ever potentially go through. And I'm not going to go through all of them. What I am going to do is take a look at the physical location of my item. What I would wanna do is find items on the second floor book stacks. Those are the items that are gonna check out for three weeks with my Citrus ID. So if I click on that, I get my list of print books here. 
and I have the title of my book, when my book was written and published, and the call number. Now our library uses the Dewey Decimal System. That's our way of keeping things organized. Um, all like information is grouped together. So what you're going to want to do is take this whole call number when you're looking for a particular book, you're going to want the whole call number and go up on the second floor. Now again, can't do that right now because the building is closed, but still good to see. If you want to email yourself this, all you're going to do is click right here on this little email and put your email address in. It will send you the link to the book and then you can find it when the library is open again. Now for our second part of our worksheet, question number two, oh no, that's list the title and call number. Next thing we're going to be doing is looking at our ebooks, right? So we're going to look at a particular ebook called Human Diseases and Conditions. So what I'm going to do is type that in right here. Conditions. It's this first one here. I can see that it's available online. Great, I'm gonna click on it. And full text availability is gonna be right here, Gale eBooks. Go ahead and click on that. And it's gonna take me here because I am not on campus. So if you're not on campus, you're gonna to have to sign in to your library account. And the good news is with this new system, we also have the ability to make all of your passwords the same. So you may have had a My Library account before. It's unnecessary now. Now you just sign in the same way you sign into Canvas and Wingspan and all that good stuff. So it's the part, first part of your Citrus email address and your email password. Sign me on and it is going to take me here to my ebook. So I have my table of contents here, and I'm going to find the volume that I think is going to be the most helpful for my topic. Now they're in alphabetical order here, so I'm going to pick volume four, because that's where S starts. And I can scroll down. Oh, stress and stress-related illness. That might be something that can help me out with this, right? So I click on it, and I get my whole article here. It gives me related subjects on the side, more like this. That's really helpful. The article is going to be kind of long because it's a whole chapter in an ebook. If I want to go through it quickly, what I can do is hit Control and F. And then I can search for particular words. I'm in Google Chrome, so it brings me this box right here. I think in Firefox, it's down here in the corner. Um, but what I can do is use this to search for particular keywords. Like if I'm trying to press relief. Hmm, I see the word relief doesn't come up. How about re I've been re R E D U C, and I can see that the word reduce comes up once. Now it doesn't uh, give me context; it just shows me where the words are. But it's still a good way to go through the article kind of quickly. If you find an article that you like, I encourage you to utilize this top. Highlight the article, make notes. If you have a printer at home, you can print it. You can email it to yourself so you have it for later. And you can cite it. Now you are gonna cite every uh, resource that you use. If you did not create it, you're gonna cite it. And for this class, we're using APA. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the little quotation marks here. And I'm going to see my citations. I'm gonna click APA here. Now here's the thing. All of our databases are going to show you APA 6th edition. We very recently just switched to APA 7th edition. Um, so double check. I always advise students to double check any citation that they get from a database. It's a computer. It is not thinking. It is not checking to make sure it's correct. It's pulling information from where it thinks it should get it and putting it into the citation. So I would advise you to check anyway, but now I'm going to advise you to triple check and make sure it matches the style of citation that your instructor wants. Some instructors are not requiring APA 7 just yet, so check in with your instructor and see which citation format they would prefer. Now if I want to get the citation, I can click select here, right click and click 
a copy. And then if I want to email the article to myself, I can do send to, email it to myself. And then in the message, I can put my citation. There it is. Yeah, I can put my citation. So I could do that too. So that is our ebook, our Gale ebook assignment here. However, we have more than one ebook database available. Let's go take a look at the other ones here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back here to our library homepage and I'm going to click databases. So we have 52 databases available at Citrus. I'm only interested in looking at ebooks right now. So I'm going to click all database types and pick ebooks. So we can look at several here. You can look at EBSCO ebook collection. You can look at Gale, or you can look at our Salem Press ebook collection. I'm going to go ahead and click Salem Press. And I'm going to see what I have available. Now, stress is a pretty big topic, right? Like it's a big thing. And you're probably not writing a paper just about stress. You're probably writing about some aspect, uh, whether it be, you know, health problems that come with stress, ways to reduce stress, uh, things like that. What you're going to want to do is take that topic and put it into the search bar because that way that'll help the database find topic, find articles that are more relevant to what you're talking about. I'm going to type in stress relief, right? Because that's what I'm interested in right now. I'm sure we're all interested in that right now. When I click on that, it gives me more results here. And I can even break it down in results by category. If I'm interested, I like, let's say I just want to see health related results. Okay, so just health, what happens then? That took me down quite a bit, right? That's pretty helpful. I can also search for different keywords here, but I'm good with this. I'm, I'm, I'm interested in this particular article, so I can go ahead and click on stress reduction here. It's gonna highlight my keywords for me, but again, Control F will work really well in this situation to go through this quickly. I can save, email, and print the article, and of course, I can click the little quotation marks here and get my citation format. So that's very helpful and important. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is go back to our databases. I'm gonna go back up here to the top and click, click all, clear all filters, because now I wanna look at all of the databases we have. And the one I'm really interested in is EBSCO Post Multiple Databases. That's here in our popular databases. So if I click on that, it is going to give me multiple databases here. My advice to you is to leave the default ones checked and then scroll through and see if there are other databases that fit your topic. Like we're talking about health related things, so Health Watch might be helpful for me. I might also be interested in Health Source or the nursing edition of Health Source. Medline might be something you're interested in. Okay, so I'm going to keep that there. Then when I'm done selecting my databases, I'm going to go down here and click continue. Okay, so up here I can see the various databases that I'm searching and I kept my defaults in here and I also added in a health Watch Health Source, Health Source Nursing Edition. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to take my keyword, so stress. I'm going to drop this down here and select a field. I'm going to pick all text, and then I'm going to add some other keywords in here as well. So I'm looking for stress and some other keywords. So I'm going to do relief or see it's trying to help me here, right? You see this? Now we know that, you know, sometimes autofill, not the world's best thing, but in this case, it really is trying to help me. Like relief or reduction or management. 
I might want to look for any of those keywords. If I just put in relief, it's only going to look for the word relief, right? It's not going to look for the other terms. It's not thinking for itself. It's doing what I ask it. And if I ask it for one word, that's what it's going to find. So in this case, all of these words kind of mean the same thing, right? I might be interested in articles with any of them. So I'm going to go ahead and take those. I want all of them. Or is a great linking word for that. And I do all text again and then click search. Okay, so it gives me a ton of results. Oh my gosh, look at that. So there's no way you're going to read all of those, right? It's just not going to happen. It's not a good use of time. I know we have supposedly more free time available to us, um, but this is just not a good use of your time. So we are not going to do that. What we are going to do is take a look at how to break down our topics here. So I'm currently looking from 1888 to 2021, right? That's when my articles are dated. I am just guessing, um, shot in the dark here, we don't think about stress the same way in, in 2020 that we did in 1881. Uh, I usually recommend to students to have about a 10 year span on articles. Uh, so in this case, I'm gonna do 2010. That way I'm sure to get, you know, updated content, right? So that took me, it took me pretty, you know, it took me down to 600,000, 600, which is still too many to read, but better than what I was at. So from there, I can go through and look at my different types right here too, if I wanna break it down by or scholarly peer reviewed journal or popular source. Do that. The difference between the two, so an academic journal is going to be very well researched. It's gonna be written by experts in the field for experts in the field. And it's gonna have something called peer review, which is when a, a group of really smart people read your paper and they decide if the information that you are sharing is essentially good. Like we, we're going to give it to you, you're going to read it and say like, yeah, this is good. I'm an expert in this. I think this information is good enough to share with other people. So good information there available there. Um, sometimes a little bit more difficult to read, maybe not necessarily as fun as like a People magazine or a Rolling Stone, but really good information. Still, even if I decide to take it down, let's say I'm gonna pick scholarly journals. Let's just for you know argument's sake, say I'm gonna do scholarly journals. That took me down, took down another, another 100,000, but I'm still not gonna look through all those. I'm just not gonna do it. So how can I decide what article to look for? It's kind of, you know, it's not super easy, but you're gonna get really comfortable with it. You are gonna look here at the title of the article, see if that strikes your fancy at all. And you're going to look here at the subjects. These are the subjects that your author is associating with their article. So take a look at them and see if they tie into anything you're talking about, right? Like if you are talking about stress in college students, you're like, oh, okay, I see psychological stress, I see college students, I see mental health. This might be something helpful for me. You can also hover over this little piece of paper with the magnifying glass here, and that's gonna give you the article title, where it was published, who wrote it, and an abstract. Which, and an abstract is a summary of the article. So if you read the summary of the article, that's gonna give you a good idea of what it's about and if it's gonna be helpful for you. If you decide that it is going to be helpful for you, you can go ahead and click here to PDF full text. And it's going to pull up the article just like I have it, the uh, journal sitting in front of me. Academic articles do tend to be a little longer uh, than popular sources as well. So let's see how long this one is when it finally loads. Yeah, 12 pages. So you can go through here, you know, kind of skim, do, your, do, do the skimming thing, do control F to see if this is something that you would like. And EBSCO has all of the features that our other databases do. Just not spelled out quite as well, but you can save it to your Google Drive, you can print it, you can email it. If you're feeling super ambitious, you can create an EBSCO account and put it into a folder. And this little yellow piece of paper here is my citation key. So if I click on that, scroll down, there is my APA. Now APA 6, APA 7, APA 312, 
I can look at this and see that it is not a correct citation, right? It did not pull the capitalization that it should have. It pulled what was listed in the article, see, but it didn't pull what's proper for APA. So you definitely always want to check and make sure that these citations look good. Okay, so that is EBSCO. I'm going to go back here to our database list again, and I want to show you some fun stuff now. So I click on all database types and I go down here to streaming video. We have two different streaming video services. Well, sorry, we have five, right? The two that I'm going to recommend to you today are Films on Demand and Canopy. So let's go ahead and click on Films on Demand. Films on Demand is um, more educational films, documentaries, things like that, but really great content available. So there's a couple of ways I can search. I can put in my keyword here, or if I can click on these three lines when this finally loads, and it can, I can search by various subjects too, right? So I know what my keyword is, it's stress. So let's go ahead and click stress or type in stress and see what happens. So it gives me 7,743 results. And from here, I can just go through and sort of see, you know, what, do I, what am I interested in? What looks good to me? And maybe I'm interested in, um, you know, traffic stress. Let's see. Probably not now, right? Because we're not driving anywhere. But um, in when life is normal, I have a very long commute, so that might be interesting. Uh, I can break it down by segment here, right? The full program is called Stress, Keeping Your Cool. This particular segment is uh, called Traffic Stress. I have the transcript available, which is great if you're going to be quoting any videos in a paper that you're writing, so that way you don't have to write stuff down and then pause the video and rewind and write it down again. This is going to make your life a lot easier. Uh, this database also has other um, features available as well, including our citation key here, APA, because yes, you have to cite videos. I get that question a lot. Yes, you do have to cite videos. So I can cite it. I can share it. I can share it to email. I can share it to, I can give, use an embed link here. And I can create a custom segment. So this is cool. If I want to create a visual presentation, if you're ever in a situation where you are doing a speech or anything like that, sometimes it's fun to have visual aids. So this database allows you to cut out a segment of the video and pop it in, embed it into your PowerPoint presentation or whatever you're using. So that's Films on Demand. What we're gonna do now is take a look at our other streaming video service, which is Canopy. Now I know that we previously logged in to our databases, but Canopy is gonna make us log in again. Oh, it knows me now. That's, I've been doing this a lot. What it'll do, let me log out so you can see what it looks like. So this is what you'll see. Uh, log into Citrus College. Go ahead and click, yep, I wanna log into Citrus College. If you don't have an account, go ahead and create one here. You don't have to use your Citrus password. You can use you know, whatever password you want. If you do have an account, just click log in over here and then put in that information and it's gonna say hi, and it knows you at this point. So Canopy is a really great uh, streaming video service. In addition to academic films and documentaries, it also has fun stuff available to you too, like you know, some independent movies, we have some great courses plus here. Um, what's recommending stuff for me. It's always interesting to see what it recommends for me because my husband and I both watch this. So it's like, really, it has all of the HBO documentary films, a lot of uh, world movies. So this is, you know, good to have just for fun too um, because we're all under a lot of stress right now. So this is something when you're ready to take a break, this is a good thing to be aware of. Uh, there are apps for this you can put on your phone 
or on your smart TV or on your tablet or whatever you have. Um, so in addition to using it for class, which we're going to watch how to do, you can also do fun stuff. So if I click browse here, I can see it breaks it down into all different subjects. So I can do health. I might be interested in mental health here for stress. Or I could put in my video subjects. Let's take a look at if I just click in mental health, what happens? Okay, so it breaks it down into different uh, categories here. Aging, emotional trauma, eating disorders, recently added. This one looks kind of interesting to me. Stress in your body, right? So if I go ahead and click on that, it's gonna, it's, it's a, there are 24 episodes in this series. So I can look through and see if maybe one of them is gonna be better for me than another one. I'm interested in, you know, stress in your body episode one. So if I click play episode one, it's going to show me like this that I can click uh, play from here. And just like films on demand, it has some similar features here. The transcript does exist. It's just going to be down under more here. So if you do want to quote this, we have it. The citation key is available as well. So there's your APA citation. If you want to share the video, you can do that. You can embed it, you can email it, you can put it on your social media. And once again, you can create a clip to use at a later date in perhaps a visual presentation. So Films on Demand and Canopy, both two great databases uh, for education and, you know, like I said, just to relax. You definitely need to take some time for yourselves, right? Okay, so I'm going to go back to the library homepage. It really doesn't want me to click out of that. Okay, fine. Go back here to the library homepage. And one of the things that's super important when doing a research paper is remembering how to cite. Now, we know that a lot of students, um, they say that's the hardest part of doing a paper. They get, you know, overwhelmed and flustered, and we are here to help. You can always reach out to us with all of our contact us information. And under research help here, we also have a citations and research tips page. So if I click on that, it takes me to my citation page and I can click on APA here. Now we do have an APA 7 page up um, with some tutorials and handouts and reference guides. And we still have our APA 6 page available as well. So find out which one your instructor wants you to use and follow that. Remember, you're always writing for your instructor, so play to your audience. Okay, so that brings us to the end of this session. Thank you so very much for listening. Remember, you can always reach out to us. There's our virtual guide here. You can always reach out to us if you need anything text, chat, email, Facebook, Instagram, whatever is easiest for you. We are here to help you during this time and all times. So please reach out if you need anything. Thank you so much for watching this. Um, stay safe and stay well.